revealing that Jamie told her over FaceTime that Jake lost his phone the day before and his Find My iPhone was missing. <gasps> they obviously quickly draw the... Hello everyone, Dylan here, and welcome back to another reaction. So today we'll be reacting to three text conversations with creepy backstories by Mr. Nightmare. So I think it's it's been a little while since I last reacted to Mr. Nightmare's videos. So if you guys want me to react to more of his, which I do anyways, just please let me know anyway. And could we get like maybe like five likes in today's video? Or probably 10, but my goal is to get up to like 30 likes in like less than 24 hours. I don't know if you could do it, but actually, let's see if we could get 10 likes in less than 24 hours. Could you guys do it? Because I really, I, I believe in you. I believe in y'all. Um, so... If you guys want to shout out, make sure to stay active for like at least like a week or a month or something. Um, I'm going to give like two or three shout outs every video for those who are active. But you got to you gotta keep on being active. So, so yeah. Three text conversations with Creepers Pack Stories. It came out a week ago and yeah um i might react to um the few few um videos that i've missed but anyways i hope you guys enjoy like comment and subscribe turn on the notifications so you won't miss a video anyways let's begin I'm about to show you in this video are three different sets of texts that become much scarier when you hear the background stories behind them. In this first one, these are texts between a young girl named Emily and her mom. Emily sent me screenshots of these texts along with the background story to go with them. First, to read the text. Wait, 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 wait. Are you home? No, still with your dad. What's up? I heard someone come in. The house is Peter home? I don't know. I've been in my room. I don't think so because he was supposed to work till 12 tonight. Are you sure you heard the door then? Mom, there's someone in the house. Oh, damn. What? What is it? Mom, I don't know this. Um, what the? Okay, that's like... That's... That's creepy. For especially... That a mother talking... Like, texting her daughter and... The mom's hearing that from... Um, her daughter that's Lily says to her mom creepy sf home? man no still with your dad what's up i heard someone come in the house is peter oh home? he i don't know I've been he read it room. anyway i don't think so because he was supposed to work till 12 tonight are you sure you heard the door open then mom there's someone in the house what who is oh it mom i don't know there's some man walking around downstairs i'm scared what do i do and we find somewhere to hide right now i'm calling the police Lock your door right now and hide somewhere in your room, okay? Okay, I'm in the closet. Okay, good, sweetie. I'm on the phone with the police. Don't make any noise at all. Stay in the closet until you hear the police come inside the house. Do you still hear them? Mom, he's trying to open the door. Oh, damn. Emily, please just be quiet. You're going to be okay. The police are almost there. Emily, the police are there. Are you okay? This was where the text ended. Oh, this was what God. was going on that night when Emily sent these texts to her mom. She was home alone while her mother was out to dinner with her dad, and her older brother Peter was working late. Nobody was expected to be home except for her at this time, so when she heard the front door closing downstairs, she was immediately alarmed and concerned. She texted her mother asking if she and her dad possibly returned home early, to which her mother shot that down saying she was still with her father. On the side, sometime between her mom asking Emily if she was sure she heard the front door open and her follow-up question mark, 
Emily texted her brother Peter as well asking if he was home, and he replied he was still at work. At this point, Emily peeked out her bedroom door down the stairs and saw in her words a 30-something-year-old tall man in a hoodie, beanie, and black sweatpants walking around her living room. At this point, she started to freak out and locked her bedroom door as quiet as she could and continued to text her mom. Upon telling her mom some stranger was in the house, the mom suggested Emily hide in the closet while she got on the phone with the police. Who could that man while be? While sitting in her bedroom closet trying to wait this nightmare out, Emily heard the man fiddling with the doorknob to her bedroom trying to open the door, followed with him trying to forcefully break the door open by the sound of it. Oh my god. This was where Emily stopped replying to her mother as she was too scared to even move a muscle in fear of being heard, even after the man gave up on the door. Police arrived and entered through the front door, which was unlocked, and they knew to go straight to Emily's closet. It was only then when the police opened the closet door that she felt safe to move. The intruder had stolen a number of valuables, but Emily was fortunate enough to have made it through this unharmed. She called her mother while the police were there to let her know she was okay. The parents returned home shortly thereafter. This is a perfect example of why you should always make sure all the entrances to your house are locked, especially at night or when you're home alone. I do the same thing because I get excited. Come on in. Of that I'm Dr. Nate Fuvini, I'm our medical leader. In this Good next one, the following text are between a girl who wishes to remain anonymous, who I'll just refer to as Amanda, a guy named Jake who she met a handful of times through friends, and separate texts among Amanda and her friend Alyssa. It starts with Jake texting Amanda, hey, and this is how it goes. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing, what about you? Same, want to hang out? Maybe, what do you want to do? I mean, we can't hang here because my parents are home, but what if I came to you? Are your parents home? Nope. So let me come, lol. When? I'm free now if that works for you. What made you even think to hit me up? You're really pretty and I just want to hang out with you. Okay, I look like a potato right now, so you have to give me some time to get ready. That's fine, what's your address? Word, I'll head over soon. Wait, no, don't, I need time to get ready. The text between Amanda and Jake left off there, where he apparently left her text on red when she asked him not to come over just yet. At the same time, she went to go text her friend Alyssa about it, as Alyssa's part of the same friend circle as the two of them. Amanda was surprised to be hearing from Jake and texts Alyssa to see her reaction about it. This is how those texts went. OMG, he randomly hit me up, and he wants to come over. Are you going to let him? I told him yeah, but to let me get ready. He said he's going to head over soon. I told him wait, but he left me on scene. Wait, hang on. I feel like it's weird that he's texting you. I'm gonna call him. Why? Don't mention me. I won't, but he's not picking up FaceTime anyway. I'm calling Jamie. This is weird. Uh -huh. Why is it so weird? Because I know he wouldn't just text you like that. Oh. Maybe Alyssa finds it surprising and odd that Jake would text Alyssa. He probably wants something, if you know what I mean. Oh my god. Oh, God. The sole reason that Jake was apparently on the verge of officially dating someone else. When Alyssa tries to call Jake multiple times but fails, she then resorts to calling Jake's sister, Jamie, who was also part of the same friend group. All the while, Amanda is confused as to why Alyssa finds this all so weird. Alyssa's last text to Amanda was OMFG, before calling her, revealing that Jamie told her over FaceTime that Jake lost his phone the day before, and his Find My iPhone was... <gasps> they obviously quickly draw the... What the f- I, I, I wish I could curse so badly, but like, I don't want this channel to get taken down. What the f- <gasps> No way. Yo, that just gave me the chills. What the f <gasps> No way. Okay, I need to play this video because I can't spend all freaking time like this, that but whoever oh was texting my Amanda God. was not Jake. Jake then got on the phone with Amanda and told her that whoever had his phone was nobody that he knew because he lost his phone during his morning run. The three didn't know whether it was just a prank or not until Amanda got a follow-up text from the person who had Jake's phone saying, I'm here, I'm at the door. Given that the whole reason this person came over was because Amanda said her parents weren't home, meant whoever was on the other side of the door likely meant her harm and they were aware she was a defenseless girl home alone. Amanda looked through the peephole of her front door, and there was someone in a hood standing on her front porch, looking at the peephole. Amanda sent one final text saying this, I know this phone was stolen, I called the cops already, they're almost here. 
You better get out of here and never come back or you'll be sorry. We also have you on video camera, so wave hello. The person read the text right away and didn't respond. The next time she checked through the peephole, the person was gone. Oh, Jake no. was able to get his IMEI number, and since it was being used for illegal activity, police helped track the phone to a man who lived a town over, who was prosecuted accordingly. And in this case, justice was actually served. Wait, but in this, the question is, like, honestly, I want to know, even though. Even though I shouldn't know, but like, how old is the woman? Is the girl and the guy? Oh wait, it said um, like thirty something. But oh no, that's the great. One, that these were the texts so creepy, by single man. mother Marissa Rivera. Marissa was awoken by her phone vibrating on her nightstand at 1 in the morning on a Friday night. On the screen were a bunch of texts from her son John. The text went as follows. Mom, I need help. I got into a car accident. Can you come pick me up? I think I injured my elbow. The damage is pretty bad. I don't know what to do. Please tell me you're joking. Are you okay? Yes, my elbow just hurts. Where are you? At the intersection of Robeson Street and Humphrey Lane by Longley Supply. Is Kevin with you? No, I'm alone. Okay, just stay there, I'm coming. Marissa started to get ready to go to her son's aid when she remembered he had location sharing on with her. So, wanting to make sure he gave the right location, she checked where her son's iPhone was located. She was taken aback when she saw John's location was at the house, not at this random intersection. She went to John's room, but he wasn't in his bed. So she went and called her other son, Kevin, who was also still out. Kevin picked up his phone, sounding intoxicated, according to Marissa. And when asked if Kevin was with John, he said yes, and John said hi mom into the phone, less drunk sounding than Kevin. The what two the were together hell? and claimed there was no car accident and that John lost his phone. Marissa came to the horrible realization that if her kids were telling the truth, somebody else was in the house with her using John's phone. Marissa left the house with her cell phone and called the police while hiding in her car, reporting a breaking and entering. Police showed up and searched the house. Nobody was there. On top of that, John's phone oh, location damn. was updated to down the block, but that was the last known location before it was either turned off or damn. broken. The office window of the house was the most likely entry and- One second, guys. An exit point since according to Marissa it's easily liftable and big enough for most people to fit through. Marissa was having the conversation with her son while standing in the middle of the house, loud enough for whoever was in the house with her to hear her realization that the car accident never happened, and heard her rushing out of the Damn. house. Uh -huh. What most likely happened here was somebody who knew John either stole or found his phone, broke into the house through the window, and tried tricking their mom into leaving the house so that they could rob the place while nobody was home. Wow. She called her other son and was able to realize it was some kind of setup, and she was able to get the police to the house. The family was never able to find out who was the one who sent the text on John's phone. Perhaps another story illustrating the importance of having a passcode on your phone to prevent a stranger or anybody else from having complete access to it. But they could um, figure out a way to bypass it. Bro. The freaking creepy. I, bro, I don't even know what to say. That's creepy as hell, man. That's creepy as hell. Uh, so, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and we're on the road to 6k subs. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.